Why are air-filled tyres faster than solid rubber ones? Here, Adam Hart Davis recreates an experiment first done by John Dunlop, inventor of the pneumatic tyre. Here's my version of John Boyd Dunlop's scientific test. He did it in his backyard, but I've come here because I've got a slope here. I'm going to hold each wheel in turn up at the top of this slope, so that then they both have exactly the same slope to run down, and then they're going to run into these obstacles at the bottom. Now, these are actually fence posts that I've borrowed from Belfast City Corporation. I hope they won't mind. And they simulate the cobbles and curbstones and generally rough streets of Belfast. I know they're a bit over the top, but nevertheless, I want to see which of these wheels will run better. OK, first, the solid rubber one. Hold it, oh, bang, hold it up to the top, right at the top of the slope. I'm just holding it and letting go. One, two, three, go. It just made it. It obviously came quite a cropper on the first one. It just crawled over all three, and it's what, about a foot beyond the third one. Now, let's see what this new pneumatic tyre can do. Exactly the same conditions, I'm just holding it right at the top of this slope, and I'm just going to let it go, trying to let it go straight down the middle. One, two, three, go. Yeah, look at that, straight over. No problems at all, and it's still going right up this mountain. Terrific. Obviously, it's going to be much better on really rough ground. And the reason for that is that this pneumatic tyre reduces the unsprung weight of the bicycle almost to zero. Let me show you what I mean. Look, when this solid tyre comes along and hits an obstacle, it's, there's no give in the tyre in the at all, so it's got to go into the air. And that means all the energy in the bicycle is wasted because the whole lot's being lifted off the ground. They're not only the wheel, but the whole bike and the rider. Whereas when this comes along, Look, it squishes, and so it runs almost straight over without rising at all. And if, as long as the bumps are smaller than the thickness of the tyre, all that happens is the tyre squishes. Now, you lose a little bit of energy in the squishing of the tyre, and you lose that all the time. It's like riding very, very slightly uphill. But you do not have to lift the whole bike and rider into the air every time you go over a bump. How was it for you? Please comment on and rate this movie. Think you can do better? Then try to explain it yourself.